Today we are going to discuss how to create a repeating group within an Abbey FlexiCapture Flexi layout. And the reason why we have repeating groups is because we want to extract information that's repeated on a document, but it, maybe it's not in a tabular format or not in a nice clean table. So we can't use the table element because it's too maybe too restrictive. So we have to tell the software that we have information that repeats. And therefore, when we extract it, we want it to repeat. And when it ex exports, we want it to repeat the table and columns too when we export the documents. So what we're going to do is focus on this the repeating group element. We're not going to go through the process of setting up a Flexi layout from scratch or plugging it into the Flexi Capture software. That has been covered in other videos, and I ask you to reference those if you have any questions on that process. The first thing we're going to do is simply create a repeating group search element. And I'm going to name it just what we call repeating group one. The reason for this naming standard, and everybody has their own naming standards, and you, of course, can develop your own, is so that we know that this is the base level of a repeating group. And then as we nest, if we have two nested groups, you can see we would have RG1, and then we would have everything nested under RG1 as RG2 and RG3 and so forth. So that's the, that's the purpose of what this is all about. Now, within a repeating group, we want to tell the software that what we're extracting. And in, in this case, I'm going to tell it about three labeled fields. We're going to extract student information and then the average GPA. And then we'll have that, of course, twice because there's two pieces of student information and two average GPAs on this document. So what I'm going to do is just create three different labeled fields. Now, for ease of this demo, I'm going to keep them labeled fields. Of course, you can process documents, and you would maybe even develop, develop this one a little bit differently than me. But just understand, for ease of a demo, I'm just going to restrict these to labeled fields. Of course, you can use any other search elements for repeating purposes. So just quickly, I'm going to set up uh, the student information that we want to extract. And just with just assuming that we want to stay away from this ID number, I'm just going to tell the search area to, to limit that here on where we find the student number. And I'm just going to add some additional labeled fields here for the ID number. And field position to the right is sufficient for us. And then lastly, we'll do the average GPA so that we're capturing this average GPA per student. And the label here will be average GPA. So now we have three different labeled fields set up for, that will be repeating. All, what I'm going to simply do is just test this. And you'll see that it is extracting repeated information. It doesn't have them together yet. And that's going to be the next step. But you can see it's capturing down here in our hypothesis tree multiple instances of a repeating group. Sometimes you will have an instance or a last instance of a repeating group. And as long as that last instance is all these yellow bubbles, then you won't have a problem with the software. It, it shows there kind of as a, a hidden element and it will not get exported and also not used in the preview to the users that were or verifying our extracted details here. So it did extract uh, the information that we needed to. Now you'll see that it's kind of messing these up and there's some tricks we can use and also different elements that we can use to, to help with this and so that it keeps this information together as one repeating group. For this case, I'm just going to tell the software that we want the student to be the anchor. And all I'm going to do there is just tell the software that I want always to capture the one closest to the ed, the top of the document. Your logic on your documents may be different, okay? So just note that this is obviously for, for demo and video purposes. The other thing I will do is I will tell that then the number and the average GPA that I want it to be closest to the student that it's referencing. So what I'll do is simply just tell it to find me the search element that's relevant to the student. And once again, the search element that is relevant to the student. And if I test this now, you'll see the first repeating group here. We found the label in the field for each of those that we wanted to reference. And then on the second one as well here. So that's how we set up a repeating group. It's a very simple process. Then, of course, we would add a block. We have a repeating group block. And you can, of course, add multiple pieces of text as well. Here. So what I'm going to do is show you what, it, what the software looks like from a repeating group perspective. If we add a repeating group, it's just the display to the end user that changes here. And I'm just going to tell the software that this is um, all instances of a repeating group block. Otherwise, we can return 
some separate text here. So just hang with me here as I set up this. We'll just use the student name for this sample. This is, once again, only going to show you what the user sees once we've extracted it. So we'll just call this the student name. And we'll tell this this is the student name field. So that's if we set up a repeating group block. We can tell the software just to return it outside of the repeating group. When we do that, it's very important, however, that we use this has repeating instances. And then we want to tell the software, of course, where we find the student name in this case. Okay. What I'm going to do is save it. I'm going to export this so that we can use it. And we will come back to our demo here, and we'll actually create a new form together. We'll load a sample. We'll tell it where our Flexi layout that we just exported was. Of course, we'll give it an intelligent name. Tell it the marking type, or excuse me, the OCR or, or handwriting type that we want. And then lastly, you'll see here. So you can see the two different ways I return the block to the software. It's going to be the same information. It just displays differently to the end user, operates just a little bit differently. And you can see one groups them in what we call a formal group. And then the other one just brings it into like a tab tabular format. So what I'm going to do is just simply test this with you, just so you can see the little bit of a display difference here on where the software extracts that information. So. Of course, in the real world, we would want to add additional blocks so that we return the ID number and the average GPA that we referenced there in the FlexiLab as well. So I hope you enjoyed this short video of how to create a repeating group. Repeating groups are very, very powerful and very commonly used in the development of Flexi layouts. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We'd love to be of assistance to you. Thank you so much.